And here at home, new information has been revealed that Biden officials are telling the Israeli government that a ground campaign in Gaza must limit further civilian displacement, undermining, many say, Israel's war efforts. Joining us live right now in Washington with the latest details on this is our chief White House correspondent, James Rosen. James, interesting how this was revealed to the press also, I think. Indeed, Bianca, and good afternoon. These striking comments were made during a background briefing call with reporters, meaning the speakers could only be identified as senior administration officials. In yesterday evening's briefing, no reporters asked about the IDF or its tactics in Gaza, and so it was wholly unprompted when this senior aide to the president offered what amounted to Washington's harshest criticism yet of the Israeli campaign, in effect, laying down the law to the IDF. It is extremely important, and from the president down, we have reinforced this in very clear language with the government of Israel. Very important that the conduct of the Israeli campaign when it moves to the south must be done in a way that is, to a maximum extent, not designed to produce significant further displacement of persons, this aide said, continuing. You cannot have the sort of scale of displacement that took place in the north replicated in the south. It will be beyond disruptive. It will be beyond the capacity of any humanitarian support network, however reinforced, however robust, to be able to cope with it. It can't happen, the official said. The manner of the campaign has to be extremely carefully thought through to minimize further significant displacement. It also has to be conducted in a way that is maximally de-conflicted with humanitarian facilities, power, water, humanitarian sites, hospitals, other facilities, including the many UN-supported shelters located throughout South and Central Gaza. And then the official added, we have these discussions on a constant basis with Israel. And if you ask me to characterize the response, which nobody did, it's a receptive one. There is an understanding, the official said, that a different type of campaign has to be conducted in the South than was conducted in the North. Now, Israeli officials confronted with these remarks tell me they are somewhat baffled by them because... Uh, not only did no reporter ask them, and these comments were volunteered by the senior administration official, uh, but also because the Israelis have already made clear, without any need for any very clear language from United States officials, that they would never seek to replicate their northern campaign in the south of Gaza. Bianca. It is baffling. Um, and an interesting reaction, of course. We'll have much more on that. James Rosen live for us in Washington. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Thank you. President Joe Biden seems to be folding to pressure from the radicals in his party. In this post on X, formerly known as Twitter, Biden, many say, gives Hamas exactly what they want. The president doesn't want Israel to continue with this, quote, path of terror, violence, killing, and war to, quote, give Hamas what they seek. Many say this statement makes zero sense, but they're not surprised when it's this administration, of course, considering that Israelis and Palestinians have not been living side by side in peace even before the horrific attack by Hamas on October the 7th. Let's discuss this and other details breaking today and bring in now Vice President of Republicans Overseas, Mark Zell, with us today and also alongside him, former Army Reserve Captain and Congressional Candidate in Arizona, Abe Hamaday. Welcome in, gentlemen. Good to see you both. Likewise, Bianca. Great to see you, Bianca. Well, you know, let's put up the post again, uh, because there's so much with this administration and the messaging that people are just shaking their heads about. They say he's caving to progressives, Muslim votes. But basically right there, he says to continue down the path of terror and violence, killing in wars to give Hamas what they sink. Israel has every right to defend itself, and yet we hear the administration saying, yes, they do. So, Mark, break down why we're seeing uh, these types of tweets from the president and different statements from John Kirby and others at this administration. Well, uh, you know, Bianca, I don't think this is anything new. Uh, quite honestly, even after October 7th, when the president expressed a disgust at what happened uh, on, on that horrible day, what he said and, and his administration were saying is that the United States will do everything to, to allow Israel to defend itself. But what they didn't say is what a lot of Republican candidates have been saying, and that is, that is they not only should Israel defend itself, but it should finish off Hamas and the Palestinian terrorists in Gaza. Right. And that and that uh, that's a piece of the of the uh, narrative of the messaging that we haven't heard from the president or from the Democrats. In fact, you have the secretary of state, uh, Mr. Blinken, going off uh, uh, after the October 7th and repeatedly saying that what we're going to do after the war is over, the United States wants to see the Palestinian 
uh, Authority, PLO, put in charge of Gaza after wow. after they supported what Hamas did on October 7th. It's, it's really beyond belief. It is, and I'm glad you went there because Secretary Blinken in Brussels today was speaking about Israel again, saying he thinks he can stop uh, terrorist attacks that the community can from ever happening again. They were talking about humanitarian aid. Let's play this soundbite here. We'll discuss with Israel how it can achieve its objective of ensuring that the terrorist attacks of October 7th never happen again while sustaining an increasing humanitarian assistance and minimizing further suffering. This administration is going to discuss with Israel how it can achieve it. This administration that had the fall of Afghanistan that now has this, you know, uh, you know connected to the uh, uh, Ukraine issue. I mean, all of this, Abe, I mean, how, how can they stand there and just gaslight people like this on the international stage? Right now, what Israel needs most from the United States is moral support. And what we need to do is support Israel when they say that they have two clear objectives in Gaza, to eradicate Hamas so a terrorist attack never occurs, and to free the hostages. And I think it's very clear. They've been very open about that. And I believe Biden has been really hamstringing the Israeli government for a while now, trying to delay the invasion, trying to force them to do the hostage negotiation. So, you know, right now with, with Israel and Hamas, you know, I think the main priority is to destroy Hamas in Gaza. And if Biden is not willing to support uh, Netanyahu on that, you know, I think it's going to really put this uh, alliance in a, in a real uh, problem going forward. Yes, and we know that uh, the standalone aid bill for Israel, the, the House GOP passed, the Senate Democrats did not. Uh, Mark, I want to give you the final word here. This Today's the last day of this ceasefire. Um, obviously, everyone wants to see hostages returned. What, what, what is your hope for, you know, the remaining hours here? And if this is extended, what the ramifications could be? Well, listen, uh, Bianca, I have a son who's a tank commander in Gaza, and along with uh, thousands of other Israeli men and women who, are, who went there uh, to put an end, as Abe has put it, as uh, very succinctly to the Hamas regime, where the terrorism never uh, arises there in Gaza again. But every time we delay the re renewal of the military campaign, all these, uh, all these uh, ceasefire extensions, all of that leads to further uncertainty and and among our soldiers and the public here, where, where we are expecting to see this job finished. And every and we understand that the Hamas's objective in continually extending the ceasefires is to prevent that from happening. So so I I'm on one hand, I'm delighted the hostages are coming home. We just heard though that three of them, the Shiri Birbas and her, her baby son Kfir and, and their daughter uh, Ariel, four-year-old were killed while in Hamas custody. That's right. I mean, this is enough. We have to yeah. put an end to this now. Absolutely. I wish I had more time. Please come back soon. Mark Zell, Abe Hamaday, always a pleasure.